So recently I've had a lot of people ask me, Dave, how do I convert my furnace that has a fuse and a switch to a regular outlet with a pigtail so that I can get power to this in the event of an emergency? I hadn't done a video showing specifically how to convert this particular one. Although a lot of the things are exactly the same as going from just a regular switch, I want to show you that in this video. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to kill the power to this furnace. We're simply going to go to the breaker box and locate the breaker that says furnace. If your breaker box is not labeled, what you can do is remove this, making sure that you don't touch any metal while you're removing it. And you can use a contactless hot pen to determine which breaker it is that's going to this furnace. You simply turn off each breaker one at a time until you get to the one that makes your hot pen stop beeping and that will determine which one it is. Alternatively, you could use a voltmeter like this one just to verify that you don't have power to this switch. So let's go ahead and pull this cover off and show you what we got here. All right, so we got these two screws removed on top and bottom. And as you can see, we have a ground screw and on the other side, we have our switched uh, power and then our line voltage coming in from the grid power. So what we're gonna do right now is just verify that we don't have any juice here with our voltmeter. Okay, our breaker is off now. So when we touch this and ground, as you can see, nothing comes up indicating that we don't have any power going to this box. So we're totally safe to disconnect these three wires here and then we'll show you how to wire up the outlet and the pigtail. All right, so we've got all the wires disconnected. Now you'll notice up in here, we have our neutrals, which are just connected. This is probably how you will see your furnace set up if you wanna do this uh, upgrade. Okay, so just to be really clear here, um, these are the three wires from our furnace. So we're basically just going to put a pigtail on these wires and then over here, we have the two wires coming from the grid. This is our hot wire and this is our neutral. We're simply going to wire this into our outlet here. And then this pigtail will basically just plug into that outlet. And then in the event of an emergency, you can simply unplug it from the outlet and plug it into a power station or a generator. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is whatever size fuse is in here, um, you want to make sure that your breaker going to your furnace is the same size fuse. So if you had like a 15 amp fuse in this that you're removing and your breaker box was a 20 amp breaker, um, you definitely would want to change your breaker to a 15 amp from a 20. Um, that's a really easy process to do. Um, it should only take a couple minutes. But just make sure that your breaker is the same size as whatever fuse or whatever breaker your furnace is recommended to be at, which is typically a 15 amp. So now that we have all of our wires disconnected, we're going to wire in our pigtail. Now, normally you would just have a metal piece like this, but if you don't have this, you can simply drill a three quarter inch hole with a step bit. Uh, but in this particular instance, there was metal here and uh, we're just gonna pop that out. And the reason that we're doing that is so that we can install this guy right here. Now this is just a wire holder so that we can have our pigtail secured and it's not gonna rub on this and cause any potential for a short. So now that that's installed, what we're gonna do is we're going to take our pigtail. And as you can see right here, this is a 14 gauge pigtail. So it's the same gauge wiring as what's typically gonna come to your gas furnace. And we're just gonna simply feed this in and basically make the cord as long as you want it, um, just so you have enough length to where you can maybe plug in your power station or an extension cord to it. So this is about as long as we're gonna need the pigtail to be. Um, you don't wanna make this excessively long um, if you don't have to. And we just secured this so that this does not have any movement there. And then we're gonna pull our power wires for our furnace through. And we're simply gonna make our connection right here. And then all we have to do left is put our outlet in. Okay, so these are the three wires that are going to give power to our furnace. And these are the three wires that go to our pigtail. Very straightforward, green to green, black to black, and white to white. Now you can choose to use wire nuts here if you want to, but what we're gonna be using are these Wago lever nuts. And these make it really easy to make these connections. 
All you do is you pull this tab back, slip the wire in until it touches the back side, and then just lock it in and it will never come undone. They've done a lot of testing with these and they're a really great product. Now, if you're curious where to find these, you can find them in our Amazon store. Simply go down to the video description, click my favorite HVAC tools, and you'll see an electrical category where you can find these there. So you simply open up the lever there, slide your wire in until you see it touching on the back side there lock it in place and it's good to go. Now the beauty of these is that you don't have to worry about a stranded wire getting wrapped around a solid. If you're joining a solid and a stranded, this is a way better connection than a lot of connections I've seen in a wire nut. All right, so all of our connections are made here, just black to black, white to white, and green to green. So we're just gonna tuck these back here. We can put our panel back on and all we have to do is put in this outlet here. All right, so all we have left to do here is hook up these two wires onto our outlet. In case you didn't know, the brass side is always gonna be for your hot lead and the silver side is going to be for your neutral. Now, in case you weren't aware of this, on your wire strippers, you have these little holes here and the whole purpose of those holes is so that you can put it right on your wire and you can simply twist this and it'll give you a nice little bend so you can put that over the lead on your outlet. Now, one other thing that you wanna make sure that you do is make sure that the wire goes in a clockwise direction around the screw so that when we tighten this, it's not going to be pushing the wire out of the way. It's going to keep it locked in tight underneath this screw. All right, so black to the bronze lead there and white to the neutral. These are both locked in, so we're ready to secure this to the box and throw our cover back on. And that is the finished product, folks. So we simply have this pigtail that goes to our furnace. This will never be live, just for reference. We're gonna turn the power on in just a second. And basically when we turn the power on, this is all that's gonna have power. And we'll simply plug this into our outlet and our furnace should come on. All right, so our breaker is turned back on. We're gonna turn the furnace to heat. And as you can see, our inducer is on. We're gonna let this furnace turn on all by itself on grid power. And then afterwards, I'm gonna demonstrate as if there was a power outage. We would simply unplug this and plug it into our power station. There we go. All right, so we're plugged in. We're gonna put this back over to heat. And as you can see, our inducer just came on. We're pulling 31 watts. This actively shows you how long this will run based off of the amount of watts it's being pulled. Right now this says 33 hours. Obviously that will go down. The igniter just came on. That's why it drops down to 14 hours. In just a second after we have ignition, that number will hop back up and we'll notice the amps drop. Go. And after the fan comes on, we'll see how many hours of straight heating this power station will do. And of course, this unit will cycle heat cycles to keep the home warm. So it's not going to be this amount of time. It's simply saying that for while it's running, it could run this furnace for nine straight hours. But as soon as the furnace turns off, we're going to be reserving the power of this battery. So everything is on right now. We've got hot air coming out of this. So that's how you do it, boys and girls. It's extremely simple um, to convert your furnace to an outlet. So we're going to turn our thermostat back off. We're gonna let this cool off before we unplug it. And then once grid power is restored, you simply plug it back in and you're good to go. Now, if you want to be prepared in the event of an emergency, but you don't own a generator or a power station, check out this video right here where we show you how you can use any vehicle as a generator to power your gas furnace. I'm sure you'll find that video informative. And until next time, you guys be safe. Later.